And welcome to the Tito Bonito Show. Tonight we have very special guests, Natasha Estrada and Ginger Valentine. And now, here's your host, the Cuban Missile Crisis of Burlesque, Tito Bonito! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Tito Bonito Show. There is a tit and a bone in there, so there's something for everybody. Uh, Hello. I am trying something new today, so as you can see, I shaved except for this little area, so I think it looks a little Freddie Mercury, a little 70s porno, which is very gay for me, so I'm feeling this fantasy but it's probably not going to last longer than this episode uh i hope you all are doing great today uh it has been a fucking week like it has been this year we are trying to keep a little positive mindset at least for the next hour so i am going to talk to a couple of one of my some of my favorite performers and women in the entertainment industry today we have a brand new episode, but before we get started, I do want to mention that we have a uh, shout out to Anna Hood calling me big sexy in the comments that you won't be able to see later. I'm just saying that is what she's calling me right now. Um, big sexy. I do want to announce that we are going to do a huge live version of the Pansy Craze Peep Show on Twitch in September. It's going to be Sunday, September 27th uh, at 7 p.m. Pacific. It's going to be a long three-hour production. It's going to be so much fun, and we are casting it right now, so the full announcement, flyer, and all that information will be out in the beginning of September, but if you uh, please reserve that date to watch an epic drag burlesque variety show, it's going to be on Twitch, so it's going to be a little bit... A little bit safe for work, a little not safe for work, if you know what I mean. Uh, and we're going to be on the Princess Forever channel. So I'm very honored that Tito Soto is helping us bring Pansy Craze Peep Show to the way that we want it to be online. Huge, in charge, and we can't wait. So September 27th, I just wanted to get that out of the way uh, before I bring on our performers. Remember, you can also support me on OnlyFans. It's going to get racier because, y'all, there are some transitions coming. And let me tell you... I am ready for the changes that are coming in this next month. Emphasis on the words coming. Also, remember, as uh, fans, you can... I'm going to turn off the comments while we're watching, uh, while I'm interviewing our guests this evening so that we can see their beautiful faces. If you have any questions for any of the performers tonight, you can put it in the question mark box. I'm not saying I'm going to answer it, but I will at least look at it. Also, if you want, since there's no round of applause and comedy is dying with the internet... Uh, I want you all exactly what you're doing right now, showing me love with these hearts. Please, that'll sound like an audience uh, is actually laughing instead of me having to use sound effects. And like, we're going to try that today. We're going to try that today with our guests. But let's get it started. Uh, It's going to be a jam-packed hour, and I'm very ready for these guests today. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Show me some love with those hearts. Um, Our first performer slash director, slash producer, slash mom, slash literally renaissance woman, is an international headlining performer. She won the title of Miss Viva Las Vegas, and on top of that, has been killing the entertainment industry. So please help me welcome to the stage and your screens, Natasha Estrada. Hello, oh, ma'am. Oh, ma'am. Hi, there you are. <laughs> How are you doing today? Hair in the shot. We know how important that is. Listen, I was trying to just do this moment. Hello, everybody. I love this setup. You have a whole professional intro. You look gorgeous as ever. I'm loving this look. I, and so much love all around. I'm so, I feel like I just walked onto the Tonight Show. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, not vivo con Tito Bonito. It's going to be a last <laughs> nice episode today, y'all. Yes! Oh my gosh, I'm so looking forward to this episode. I'm actually a little bit sad, I will say, that we can't all three be on at once. Soon enough. The, the, Soon whole, enough. the whole journey of this this show lives on IGTV after, and it also lives on YouTube. So somebody finna watch this show, somebody's gonna give us this budget, and we are gonna have yes. a legit, you'll be like, you can be the always the singer every night, like the Roots. You can be like oh, my I would love fan. that. I'll be the band, I'll be your side band. Uh, like, before- yes! <laughs> Every time you need a, oh, <laughs> like a sound effect. Oh my God, it'd be like Salvador. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'll 
I am so there on the sidelines with my my fungus. Listen, yeah, ready. I'm so ready for this. Before we get started, though, which we clearly have, I do want to make sure everyone shows some love to Natasha. I'm not saying anybody's watching this show, but for the few of you that are, if you put a dollar in, she'll get thirteen dollars, enough for a chicken nugget McDonald's meal. So right. there is a Venmo, Cash App, and PayPal. Make sure you show some love to Natasha. But oh my God, I love you so much for joining us. You look exquisite. Thank you. It is hot as fuck. First Listen, I turned my air con I turned my air conditioner off for you. So I, I don't have air conditioning, okay? I don't have any. So I'm not wearing any pants. You can see it. If you can see here first. I am actually not either. Ah, we got the memo. Not that I ever wear them, but I'm not wearing it's, them right now. So it's de it's definitely party uh from the waist up. Party from it the is. business from it's the waist up, party from the waist up. It's one of those, and it's been one of those for the last five months or six months, however long we've been in this whole, like, pandemic. It's pretty, been a chi-chi up scenario. Pretty much. And you know what? I'm not mad at it, because as long as I can see some of you, I'm the happiest fuck. Yeah. I mean, in, in some ways, it's great that we do have this kind of uh, connectivity, you know? I mean, we're still connected, but I do miss, you know, I got a beautiful message from Ginger who was my tour buddy, my Australia tour buddy. I miss her so much, but it, there is something. I miss the backstage. I miss being on stage. I miss the audience. I miss being able to hug and squeeze and just that live energy, you know? I know that, and I'm so proud of everybody, including you who's doing these incredible virtual experiences for people. Um, and I think we have to, that shows, you know, the incredible way that you're adapting to the scenario and what we have to do to entertain and entertainment will always prevail. It will always be there. The show must go on the all the time. The show must go on. But we're also artists and we say it a lot on this show with everybody because I think a lot of artists we have, especially the successful ones, we have this community, but we also have this bond of like adapting to every situation because we kind of have to, like arts is so fragile anyways that yeah. this is just like another scenario but instead it's like we all get to share the pain at the exact same time instead like we all understand it yeah absolutely i mean it is it has been you know everything has their blessing and a curse you know it's an asset and a liability yeah. <laughs> as i've been called a few times but um i think the idea of being you're accessible you know even within classes i know myself i've been able to take classes with people i normally would not have been able to because they're international and now we're opening ourselves up to zoom which is something we're having to adapt to but the accessibility is there which is nice but yeah i'll be damned if i don't miss that like that i miss person. it too but, but remember and i hate being the like count your blessings but it's kind of true imagine if this happened in 1993 we would literally would we like we would have such a like destruction of the arts that it would just i mean i'm sure that there were instances like that so i'm just grateful that we get to do this and i'm grateful yeah. that we're able to have people be entertained in so many ways because now it's kind of like the internet is like mtv in the 90s where everybody gets to watch some shit and i mean different. careers are being made in 15 seconds or less via TikTok, and i'm i'm like over here watching people blow up and it's amazing and it's a whole new art form right it's like the ability to be able to entertain in this little window of time it has changed so much and it's opened so many doors at the same time it's made it difficult for other people you know everything comes with with something but um i think yeah there's something to be said for the way that the world is moving and this sort of virtual what was it was that jamiroquai Virtual, <laughs> virtual insanity. insanity. Yes. On, Nana. Nana. She said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like the video. I will. I will say that I'm going to. Uh, I, 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 as much as I have always appreciated being able to be on stage and to be able to do what we do, I do feel like when you're super busy, you get this kind of like, I love it, but I'm tired, and like I don't want to stop, but like. I just want to enjoy it. and I feel like we're going to appreciate it so much more when we get back to it. So I'm kind of excited to just have that energy because it's just going to be so much yeah. more grateful than like it even was before. Yeah, I mean, there is something to be said for a live audience and that there's nothing that compares, you know, as a performer, I think that's the thing that has fueled me for so many years is audience after audience after audience and no two audiences are the same even if you're performing in the same show 
And even if you have regulars, there's always new people and people are in different moods. And that's kind of the beauty of it yep. is being able to feed off that energy. And sometimes people are feeling this and they're not feeling that. And you kind of like, it's, it's an exchange that's happening. And I think that that as a performer is really where I'm like, I miss that exchange, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's yeah, like there, sex. It's you really miss not it. The, it's you really not the same. It. Yeah, it's really not the same just staring at your phone in the ring light. Like you're really <laughs> trying to like eye fuck the camera. Yeah. Uh, Natasha, I met you when I got my very first, because my first hosting gig in LA, I booked myself so I don't count it. But my real first official hosting gig was at the amazingly awesome Conga Room with Yachty Presents. Oh and my gosh! In April 2013, wow. it was Tropicana Nights and you were La Cholita. Yeah. Look, I wore this for you tonight because I was feeling nostalgic. I'm going to have to like crawl up on my... Um... Yeah! It's a shout out La Cholita! I'm in it back. <laughs> I've always been interested in how, like, because you got a resume on your IMDb that looks like Egypt Black Nile's fucking awards. Like, it is lengthy. Uh, how did you get into entertainment? Was that something that you started as a kid or as an adult? Like, what was the well, magic I of Natasha? I, I always say that I came, like, tap dancing. My dog is hacking up over here. If you can hear, I'm sorry. Or baby. Um, I always say that I came like tap dancing out of the womb. There's not a time I remember where I was not performing for an audience, you know, and not desiring an audience from being a small child creating. And I used to love um, for anybody that grew up in a Hispanic household, the Christina show. Yes, so my I, mom was on that show. Yeah, really? She so wasn't I, a guest, but she asked the question. It was kind of a problematic question, so we don't really want to talk about it too much. <laughs> but she was, she was on Christina. So I grew up in a household. Christina was very popular, okay? And so as a child, my cousins, I'm an only child, so my mom was working all the time. So I lived with my cousins who were all older than me and I would force them. And I had a show called the Natacha show. Like one of my cousins <laughs> <laughs> because my grandfather didn't speak English that well. And only, he only called me mija. But if he was pissed, he would call me natachas. <laughs> natachas. And that was like, it kind of was like a Dennis the Menace. But like, <laughs> if you were a little Mexican girl. So, a Mr. You know, Winslow. Oh my God, yeah, I love with it. A, with a Russian name. Mom, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> um, that's a millennial. That's a Mexican millennial, I guess. Um, yeah. So yeah, I would have the, my cousins like be my guests on the Natacha show. And so that was really, I was always creating and I always wanted to be involved. I also, um, you know, I was also really inspired by women like Tongolele and Maria Felix and all these women who were just like these badass, essential um, women who, and Mae West especially, who just really embodied this idea of owning your womanhood. And even at a very young age, I was very, very aware of sexuality and not in a weird way, but just in a like, oh, shit. Yeah. My grandfather was a uh, uh, pachuco. He was in the Zoot Suit Riots of Los Angeles in 1943. So, yes. And because my mother was a hard ass working, single, hustling mother, my grandfather, my grandparents raised me so. Um, I was very immersed in the Pachuca culture from a very young age. I grew up in Highland Park, which is now the most gentrified popular neighborhood. But at the time I grew up, it was completely run by gangs. There was car shows every week. It was a very different. And so for me, those women and that experience was my upbringing. That was my influence, you know, my culture. I, everything I did was a love letter to that. So burlesque to tie it back in long story long um <laughs> i wanted to know girl well i so i think there was two parts of it one i was always you know my mom grew up very strict catholic mexican and when Man. she kind of broke off uh and went to study art in san miguel de allende where diego rivera created this beautiful school uh my mom kind of came back with a whole different mindset and so she was very liberal when she had me because she grew up so strict catholic mexican-american it was like women were you know 
Uh, with me, it was kind of like anything goes. We had a very open, and to this day, it's like a very tumultuous relationship. You know, we're very close, but it's it's like we butt heads because we're both strong, independent women. Yeah. Um, so actually, my mother is the person who took me to my first burlesque show, and I had been trying. So let's fast forward to the 90s. My last year of high school, I was living the life. It was not good. I was uh, involved was in a lot of things that you know and so it was kind of a transition period for me I went to go live actually in Mexico with my grandfather where my family is from in San Luis Potosí uh, oh. Zacatecas Leon Guanajuato and I, I spent months there and then I came back I was so invigorated and inspired by the culture and like just that connection and everything I had seen and then I came here and I was sort of being introduced slowly to the burlesque world but I couldn't get into any shows. I was still underage. I went to MacArthur Park, which you used to be able to get a fake ID there. Okay. That's literally where I live right now, girl. <laughs> yeah, there used to be a spot. You could still get them all the time. IDs? I'm IDs? Sure. You need IDs? But nobody believed my, I mean, the clubs in Hollywood believed it, but I couldn't get into the Velvet Hammer, which at the time was like the only burlesque show in Los Angeles. So um eventually many years later i went to see my mother took me to see um i think it was teaserama which wow. was in los angeles the one and only time it's ever been held there which if you don't know it was held in new orleans and san francisco and it was in los angeles and dita was, and Catherine were like the headliners i wow. saw kitten deville i saw um i mean just mind-blowing oh, of course i can't imagine nothing like it isis star satan's angel all these people who i i mean and the thing for me was like growing up as a girl who had always been like the chubby one so like i had to rely on being funny mm. to be accepted because i was never the ingenue and i had been in theater since i was a child actually one of my like childhood friends is now one of hollywood's a-listers and she would was always that like beautiful i like there's no question that she's that and i always had to be like the weird villain or the character or what the one <laughs> you know? i was always like i was never seen as like the beautiful one so and i knew that really early so i relied on that kind of like in my personality i knew that like humor, yeah but i was also popular i won't say that i was popular because i used my humor to connect people so i was friends with everybody the not popular kids the popular kids the whatever but also in being so popular i was alone does that mm. make sense yeah it's like you're not in any like click you're you're kind of yourself and everybody likes you and it's like oh what's up it's so and so so i feel like that sort of translated to my burlesque persona yada 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 i um I saw this show and the thing that really surprised me is it was in Los Angeles and I literally saw every single person and race and people being represented. But the one thing that was glaringly missing for me in the hometown of LA was a Latina from LA. There was one other, I, I don't remember if Selene performed that year, but uh, there was only one other blessed performer, Manuela, who was from Spain. And she did a very glamorous, like, flamenco, which was beautiful. But I didn't see, I was like, how are you going to do a show in L.A. and not have L.A., you know? Yeah. So that's really when I was like, oh, I, this is it for, like, I want to do this. And, but there was no outlet. So it was really hard at that point even figuring out, like, okay, this is what I want to do. And how do I translate that? So from that point, La Cholita was born, and she sort of, like, just kicked in the doors. I was really involved in, like, rockabilly and the pinup world. And at that time, I just was, like, hitting up uh, promoters and producers at rockabilly shows to say, put me on in between bands. And they were really, like, mm, I don't know. My dog's into it. Yeah. That's what they were saying. Yeah. They were, like, no. <laughs> they were, like, mm. my dog, I mean, my dog. Uh, they were really, like, oh, I don't know. Like, how is this going to work? But like once I did it, it kind of set off this chain reaction. And now, I mean, before the pandemic, it's incredible to see how like before it was unheard of. At that time, unheard of. And now it's like was synonymous with every single show, 
you know, rockabilly show, band, rock and roll show, any show you see, there's like music, burlesque, all this stuff. So it's been incredible to see that kind of chain reaction. It's, it's very true. And it's like, uh, thinking about the fact that like, I love when shows do have a variety anyways, because it's like, you do want to keep people as like, there's no audience that's going to want the same thing. So you want to yeah. try to hit everyone and have them enjoy something. And you won Miss Viva Las Vegas from me. Did your career kind of take off from there? Oh my God, yes. So it was really funny because, so I had just started and then I went to Viva Las Vegas one year and watched my friends. So when I started in the burlesque scene, even then people were like, your persona isn't sexy. Although mm -hmm. I will say, the Latino community had my back from day one. They were at every show screaming gritos. Like it was like, you know, and I got so much support. And that was really like heartwarming. And especially, um, it was really beautiful to see. And the thing, the reason I chose, a lot of people ask me this is like La Cholita, like why did you choose that name? And it was, it, that was the reason it was because I wanted people, I knew that it was controversial. It was very like, it started conversation and it changed the way people, people would announce the name. And then when I came out, it was not what they expected. But that was a conversation starter. And for me, I wanted people to see the wide array that we come in, you know, it's like changing this perception and this societal expectation of stereotypes and breaking down the walls of, of like, oh, you have to look a certain way for it to be accepted as you know, being Hispanic, Latino, Mexican American, whatever it was. And so that was really powerful to me at the time. Um, yeah, That's so the year that I won Miss Viva Las Vegas, the year before that, it was kind of a smaller competition. And the year I went in, it I was like the dark horse. Every there were I was competing against a lot of people that had like there was a very well known uh pinup model B actress and uh I went in there and I'll never forget it. My grandfather drove all the way out from LA to Las Vegas. He sat in a little chair on the side of the stage and it was done by audience um, oh. a applaud. And I didn't have the highest votes, but I had enough votes to get in. I had the brown berets behind me. Thank you yeah. for voting, for promoting. Yeah. And you know, like, I remember that time, like the music started and I went out there and I remember when they went to announce the name, they kind of go and they, you do applause each person. And like, I remember even trying to speak and it was an audience, like they had to move it to a ballroom that was like 10,000 people. Wow. I couldn't even see, it was like packed, the heat. And I couldn't, even with the microphone and speakers, you couldn't hear me talk because people were cheering so loud. And that moment was like, I remember my grandfather looking over to him at the side, sitting in his chair. And that was like the, the moment, you know what I mean? And I, I yeah. did use that even, um, it changed the course of Viva Las Vegas forever. That was the year. If you question it, that was the year. And I have receipts, but anyway, yeah, I, I took that shit on tour. I became a spokesmodel for a shoe company in 72 countries. I like, and people didn't know what it meant, but I used it as a PR stunt. And so people were like, I don't know what that means, but it sounds important. And I traveled all over the world by myself, by myself as with this title. And that's kind of like really what changed, you know, I think I was like 22 at the time maybe. Wow. And, um, yeah, it changed everything for me. And now it's become one of the most coveted titles in burlesque, which you're welcome, because it was my idea to have that sash. It was my idea for that tiara. <laughs> yeah, that didn't exist beforehand. So you better make um, that shit a real fucking you better make that shit a real pageant, real pageant. Right. I did. Yeah. And they did. You know, I mean, it, it was great. And I'm really it, it was a beautiful time in my life for sure. I love that so much. And you've done so much right now. You are uh, hosting a podcast, but like live. Do you do it as a live show? Come to mama show? <laughs> yeah, so I started again, I started doing this um, show called Come to Mama Show. Everything I do, I feel like is where I see a lack of representation, you got to go in there and represent yourself. I became a mother in 2011. Everybody told me my burlesque career was like over. And um, my first show back was performing. Oh my gosh, there it is. Yeah, 
when I announced I was pregnant with my son, everyone was like, oh, you had a good run. I was like, okay, what? My first show back after having my son was opening for Dita Von Tees in Los Angeles. So. Say it again for the people in the back. That was a good one. That one felt like, because as women, I think we're seen as like, you know, we're, we're it, it just, it sucks that we're like, our worthiness and all this stuff is dependent on one When you can do another. so much more than a man we too. Can and we, do, well, we can and we do, we're performing. And so I had just popped up this kid. I was the biggest I had ever been. And I went out on that stage and it was like the most gratifying. That was like my comeback. You know what I mean? It was like the best moment. So um, yeah, from there, I mean, I also had a band that toured all over the world. We're played on national French radio. Right now I have an album out with Richard Cheese that is on the Billboard charts. We debuted at number six. That was really exciting. Yes, uh, yeah, congratulations. So Thank you. So this show, Come to Mama, is about like, uh, it's the representation that I wasn't seeing before. You know, I was always seeing these mom blogs, but it was like two white women that are married in this kind of like idealistic and their sex lives are about like not having any. And mine is like mm -hmm. being a single woman and a sex positive, body positive performer. And so that's the representation I wanted to see. And it's been incredible. We've been raising so much activism for the communities um, from homelessness to, I mean, it, it just goes on. So it's been really incredible. And um, if anybody out there is a mom, hit me up because I'd love to have you on my show. Go watch okay. it. Come to Mama's show. We're highlighting everybody's individual experiences. It has been like mind blowing. It is so incredible. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I love that so much. Is it on a regular time? Like, is it it's every every Sunday at six p.m. Every Sunday. So this Sunday we're having the editor, the founder of uh, Los Angeles Magazine, or like, uh, yeah, and she's like Miss Beverly Hills, also. Okay. So and she's a mom. She's uh, Puerto Rican, so she's like you know, yeah. We love her. We love our yes. Boricuas. We do love our Boricuas. So that's another thing is like always last week we had this incredible woman um, from Spain who's like a psychic medium and talked about how that has like influenced her motherhood. So I saw that. I saw that. That was there was a lot in that that I was like, I'm gonna have to turn this off. Santa Sana Sana Culito de Rana. <laughs> I said, not today, not today. Yeah, but you know, it's something that needs to be done. It's said. So Absolutely. like, I love to use like you, my comedy experience. And like burlesque has really led me to all of these doors. I love burlesque and I will always do it. But you know, now I'm, I'm directing, I'm doing comedy and now hosting this show and just trying to like keep, you just keep going. And if you can do so much, why hold yourself back? Like, do everything. Like, explore everything, especially yeah. now that we, we kind of can. Um, yeah. Nata Natasha, I really don't want you to go. But before you go, I do want to play a game with you. Would you okay. like to play a game with me? I would love to. I did not tell you what game was we were going to play because this is a brand new game I'm going to try on the Tito Bonito show. Uh -oh, okay. But you don't have to go crazy on it. I'm going to turn on the comments. So if anybody wants to say anything to you personally, <laughs> they could just throw you some love right now. But you were getting a lot of love. Um, we're going to play Song Association. Oh, oh, so I love an association. <laughs> <laughs> like a so, so the way we play this game is I'm going to give you a word and you have... 10 seconds to come up with a song lyric that has that word in it. Oh, shit. Okay. It's not going to be hard. We're going to have fun. People can throw some fucking shit in the comments if they need to. But the songs are, uh, the words are going to be super easy. So it's just to have a good time. Do you want to try? Okay. Of course, I'm going to try anything with you. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Listen, that's on the record. All right, I'd be a fool your, not to. Here's your first word. Uh, a song lyric with the word love in it. Champagne. Sorry, Donna was talking. I can't ignore Donna. I can't. What are you drinking? Oh yeah, you can answer that. Yeah, okay, love, yeah. 10 seconds. Okay. Was that the word? Yeah, love is the word. You sing a song lyric with it. Oh, love? Uh, I don't know, but I'm thinking that watermelon sugar. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have that word, but that's in my mind. I think because I'm so in love with him. Tastes like strawberries. Listen. Oh, I bet you 110. 
Just let me adore you. He's like, I'm not even playing this game. <laughs> I will let him adore me. Adore hey, me. Hey, look, you love Harry Styles, so that works. That's I'm into it. Judges. Okay, next one. Come on. Judges. Coming. Judges. Go. All right, this next word is woman. You don't know a song with the word woman I'm in it? A woman. W O M A N. I'll show you an old girl. That was Sherry Michelle go. Welch, if you don't know. Yeah, see, you, you know got what? it. Okay. They I did. Like, I can hang I, up I like that you drink. do woman. I was going to get mad if you didn't know a song with woman in it. Oh, no, I know you that. You want to try one more? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Here you go. Let's try the word peace. Peace. Uh, well, it doesn't have the word peace, but. I... <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? It's about world peace. She said. <laughs> she yeah. said Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye. That's what I'm talking about. It's like world peace. The mother, message is mother. Peace. What? <laughs> she said mother, mother. I should put the word mother, mother. Now, baby. Oh, oh. I'm gonna need to check that glass to see if it's more than champagne because I want some. <laughs> I wish it was mushrooms. Wouldn't that be exciting? No, and then peace of my heart, but that's P I E C E. Hey, that actually will judges judges will take that. Judges ding, 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 will we'll take that. We'll take that. Will Here we? we go. We got one more word. You want to try one more word? <laughs> I want one more word. One more, one more, one more word. One more. You want to try? This word is burlesque. What song has burlesque in it, girl? Oh shit! Uh, isn't there that one with Christina Aguilera? But I don't know what it is. <laughs> you don't know the you don't know the movie burlesque. We should watch a live Zoom. Burlesque. Uh, Doesn't it just go burlesque? Judges will take that. We'll take that. Judges. Judges will absolutely take that. Oh my God, <laughs> Natasha, I love you so much. Thank you for playing that ridiculous. I love you too. This is the most fun. Do it again and again and again. Anytime. And again. I can't wait Anytime to see you Ginger. Want. I love you. I'm sorry that I love you so much. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Everyone show some love to G <laughs> Ginger. I almost called you. <laughs> yeah. Everyone show some love to Natasha Estrada, everybody. La Cholita. Yes. Oh, she's going to show the titties and then the exit it out. Damn, I'm a fucking cock block. Oh, my God. She is amazing. What a good time. I could literally talk to her forever. Uh, Mushroom heaven, listen, y'all. I kind of do. Speaking of mushrooms, I do look a little bit like Luigi right now from uh, Super Mario Brothers fame. Shout out! I'm giving you some like Mario Brothers. Either one, I could be either one of those brothers. Um, shout out to our sponsor of the day, MDS Entertainment. That is my damn self entertainment. That is what is keeping this motherfucking show afloat. Uh, my damn self. So shout out to me. I'm going to shout out to my damn self for the sponsors because uh, no one else is doing it. Uh, if you want to show me some love, my tips are in the comments. You could throw me a dollar, bro. Let me get a chicken nugget meal. Uh, come on, level up, level up, level up, level up, level up. Uh, Y'all, I'm so excited and I do not want to take any more time away from our next performer. But I do want to shout out... Um, this is my favorite app in the world, and I'm really gonna try to see if I can get croquetas for the first time ever live on the show. And this is which Cuban food are you? So croquetas, croquetas, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Is it croquetas? Damn, platanos, always. It's never croquetas. Always a platano, never a croqueta. All right, so I am uh, very excited to bring on our next guest. Uh, who's spreading the gospel of burlesque, helping anyone who wants to unleash their inner showgirl. And I see some showboys. So uh, this is an amazing performer, and I'm so excited to have her on the show. Please spread your legs, put your phone on vibrate, put it in between your legs. Give it up for Ginger <laughs> Valentine. Hello. Hi. Oi. Hi. I can only see your beautiful mustache. Well, look, there you go. Oh, Okay. I was trying to get your uh, your graphic because I want everyone to show you some love tonight. So oh. thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, I'm super excited. I've never been on a talk show before. Listen, you're still not on a talk show. Virgin. <laughs> I am. You are still not on a talk show. This is I me live okay, from my, sm from my yeah, smallest apartment. But, but I appreciate I appreciate that you can see into the future and you have so much hope for I me. Do. I do. I really, I really I mean, it's a talk show. It's a show. We're talking. Oh no, it's a talk I, show. I don't it's, really know how to quarantine. It's know. a it's a literal talk show. We are literally having a talk show. I am literally talking. 
This is actually the background from the Tonight Show that I just stole. Or wait, I, I could tell, yeah. No, it's the one from Conan O'Brien because I was like, oh, I could steal from a okay. white man. It's not, yeah, you know, I can steal from a white man. It's about due time. Uh, how are you doing, Ginger? I'm doing great. You know, you are... I mean, I get. I don't know. Yeah. I know that <laughs> question is kind of it's like such weird, yeah. Like I mean, I want to be like, yeah, I'm good, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's honest to be like, yo. Some days yeah. they fucking suck. And we don't have to talk about that right now, but I do want to mm -hmm. get to know you and I want everyone that's watching to get to know a little bit more oh. about you because not only are you a fantastic performer, but you also an amazing instructor and oh. uh, you've had a burlesque school changing people's lives for quite some time now. So I really want to talk about how you got into burlesque and then we'll talk about how you got into teaching. But just okay. besides burlesque call of fame and all of that, what got you, like what inspired you to get into oh. burlesque? Uh, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders and Playboy at a very young age, and I like Natasha, which, by the way, it was so right to see her. I, I got, I wish we could all be together, too. Um, no. Like her, also, I just came into this world, and I was just like, mm, sexy. You know, I was like, I am a five-year-old woman, and I am like, I need my, like, I don't know. I was just a little bit different. So yeah. I was always really just drawn to just glamour and sensuality and femininity and rhinestones and big hair and tits and like all of it. Um, so the when I was like 12, I saw the movie Gypsy and that was that. Nice. And then you were yeah. like, fuck it. I need, I need a strip. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. What, what have been, what have been uh, the, I'll ask that after, but what have been the best experiences in your burlesque career so far? Like, that's like if it's only one that's like can come out to your head, that one, but if it's multiple, we can unpack those as well. Okay, well, I, yeah, people don't know me, but I am super sentimental and mushy, and I can't think of a single like incident, and I wouldn't want to because I'd probably start to cry. But the thing that is like the most for me is the connections that I have with people like you and the backstage connections and the audience and. Like, for real, I don't understand. When people come up to me and they're like, yo, this is like, so means so much to me what you do. I still feel, I'm just like, Because <laughs> you wow. still feel like that person Thanks. that was saying that. What? You still feel like that person that was saying that to people when you first saw it. Yeah, yes. yes. It's kind of hard to like realize how much of an impact you have on people, but it's also kind of like, I would want you, I would want us to stay humble in that aspect of it. You know, yeah. I would want us to be like, <laughs> look at my butt, bye. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. You know, and you are like a phenomenal performer. Cause like I say, like Jezebel and a lot of performers, you are like to watch on stage. It, I hate using this word, but that's the most I feel like can like relate to the feeling. It's like, you look untouchable. You look like, like you are just otherworldly, like you're not a human being. It's so fucked oh up to God. say it like that. What? But it's like, I, oh my God. and I do, like, I feel like that on Jezebel. You Jezebel's can't just tell me shit like that, like live in front of all these, you know, tens of people. Did you just say that I was lying? <laughs> did you call me, did this mustache fool you? Do you think I'm a liar? It's true though. Cause that the thing is, is incredible, wow. Well, and I also believe that in a sense for like me as a host, I can see the difference in when I was just a performer and when I was a host. And I can yeah. see that like I build connections a little bit differently because I'm physically talking to these yes, people. Yes, it's and a I different can, medium. And afterwards they feel yeah. a little bit more like my best friend where they wanna like tell me about how much they love y'all or whatever. So it's <laughs> like I build this connection that I know for a fact it's like when I see y'all, I feel the same way. It's just I get yeah. to be a part of the show. Oh my God, that is that is really, thank you. That's amazing, that's amazing. Because it, I know what it's like to be in the audience and to. You know, I, I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like. So it means like that is like ultimately it's not really fame. And like, this sounds like such a bunch of cheesy. Well, fame shit. is shit. Let's say I that. never want to be famous. Money. I don't know. But like it really is like when you can be moved by an entertainer and if you have a desire to be on stage and if you can pay it forward and do that for somebody else. Oh, my God. That's when. Those are those, so to answer your question that. Yeah, that's you know that's, i mean I, i'm not trying to like a bit for real that and probably you know uh all the free drugs and alcohol yeah <laughs> that is uh that is definitely a little bit. i don't do that <laughs> not dare you're not, not right up here yeah. with some drugs awareness uh <laughs> listen we can do whatever the fuck we're strippers um i do like that though because the thing is too it's like drag and burlesque like just performance art in that sense it's like burlesque though specifically i feel like is just one of those art forms where it's, even though it 
umbrellas a bunch of different ones, I feel like we can put our personalities the most into it. Yes. So it just feels like it's different than if we were an actor and playing like different people's stories. It's like we're coming oh up God. with our stories. 100%. My first dream was to be a ballerina. And I have all these years of serious ballet training. And then like, I want to be Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. I always want to be these things that were already prescribed. And when I would tell people these dreams, especially like the Dallas Cowboys Sugar thing, like everybody that knew me was like, that's not you. And I was like, excuse me? Why? <laughs> Ex uh, excuse me. Excuse me. No, I am 100% destined to be so, a Dallas Cowboys so cheerleader. Excuse me. But really, I get it, though, because the thing is, is that I, at my core, I'm like a wild skating punk rock girl. And I got all these like different interests. And I don't get along. I, it's not that I don't get along with those girls, but I don't fit in because I have authority issues. And I march to a to beat of my own drum. And like everybody else, every single one of us that are in this, you know what I mean? And so I'm so glad that I never did. Uh, but it's definitely inspired me. And that's why I love burlesque so much because I can completely, I don't have to pretend like I'm some aloof something like with ballet. And like, I don't have to pretend that I like new country being in the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. <laughs> and like, <laughs> cause I do like football, like so unpopular in burlesque. But if anybody wants to ever talk, not that it's going on right now, but I- Hey, I, you I, never I, know there's burlesque, hopefully, especially in the new <laughs> world, is gonna be so in flux with different people that we are gonna have, girl, yeah. why aren't you doing a cheerleader act? I actually, I did have one long, long, long time ago. But to be honest, like, right. I'll tell you what, like, I feel like conversationally, I, no, this is what it is. The truth is, I was going to say, I'm not funny, but I can't, I have humor. But the thing is, is that comic vulnerability, boy, uh -uh, I ain't about that life. That shit scares me. I will look you dead ass in the eyes. <laughs> and see, I get uncomfortable because I'm the opposite. Yeah. But like, ask me to like, rehearse some lines or be funny, like... Oh my God, I want to fucking run away and die. Get out. No. No, and it's, but, and it's hard because comedy is like shifting. Like you could kill in a show and then that yeah. same exact joke is like not fed by another audience. But sex is still one of those. And that's the funny thing is I feel exactly the opposite mm. where I don't really believe that I can walk on stage. I mean, I know I can, but I don't prefer to walk on stage and be sexy because I'm like... I like comedy and I just like that more and it feels more natural to me. So it's, it's like, easier it's, to digest to be funny than it is to be a sex symbol also. I especially, think. especially as a guy in an all female show most of the yes. time, it's very yes. like, you don't want me to come out and be like, oh, I'm above all of this. And it's like, that really just doesn't vibe. I, I, I agree with that. And I feel like there's a, a time and a place. And again, like people are, don't come at me, but I'm just saying in general, you know, like, yeah, I think I think that there's some there's something to that. But I think that comedy and sexuality in terms of performance have very similar things in common. And it's funny that I, I run across a lot of performers They come up to me like, I can never do what you do. I can only be funny. And I'm like, well, I can't do what you do. I can only be sexy. And it always cracks me up because I'm like, we're here. So we're here because of sex to appropriate this planet. We funny is not a survival trait. We aren't instinctively funny. That's some bullshit. So why are we wired that way? society oh i'm getting on my soapbox let's just chill hey i'm into it because the thing is too like that's actually why i got into burlesque and a lot of people say keep burlesque politics out of burlesque and it's like first of all it's in insane to just take out politics in art period like that doesn't period. that's like saying to women don't have children like it just doesn't vibe because it just doesn't make sense and that's the whole point of it and that's why even as a guy in a predominantly female empowerment art form i understand that the biggest role outside of race that we're fighting right now is sexism because it's such a huge like it's mind-boggling to me still that a, a, a creature that can do so much more than a man is being told what to do by men who are inferior as fuck like and it's yeah. just a part of like what we what they've allowed and what past generations have allowed and what we thank god because of the internet i do believe connects us in a different way that we've ever had before i think that's going to be what breaks down this old ass way of thinking it is so, I, I you know it but it's fucking better it, it, <laughs> i mean it's fucking better. yeah if not i'm going to toronto uh honey i'm going to uh, -uh west coast but vancouver wild uh, -uh. Mm -mm. listen Spanish. my family came from cuba to america so if we got two countries wrong i'm yeah. going to whichever one has just keep, it right keep, keep going up I'm you're gonna end gonna up keep going north till we hit santa <laughs> till we get honey to santa. it's gonna get cold it's gonna listen, get cold i lived in chicago don't for get seven that jacket because so you are gonna freeze you're gonna I get can do so cold i lived in chicago for seven years so i can definitely oh that's do right cold. actually i did know yeah definitely. and i'm definitely but i definitely don't want to do it anymore i oh. love la and i love because the thing is uh L.A. burlesque has seen, and I know burlesque in general has seen such a 
difference since you've been starting in it but like i know this is a weird question to ask because ask me, in the future but like how how do you see burlesque changing like oh my, obviously no, this is, okay no this is what i'm asking everybody else i'm asking everybody this question I'm like what do you think it's going to be what do you think it's going to be first of all uh i'm not necessarily researched or you know the right person to ask this question to but my dumbass opinion based on my own beliefs and instincts is that i think that it will live entertainment in general it's just going to be a long time yeah and i think it's so on my dark days, I'm like, it's a mass extinction event. And I, I think about people and I'm like, are you making it? Are you, and I don't mean like, are you making it? Like, are you survive? Like, but I just mean like emotion, like emotionally, like without the stage, I'm not taught, you know? Yeah. And I just feel like already a lot of us have already kind of been like those of us and people before me, like, I can't even say shit. Cause I've been in it for like since 2007, but I still feel new in lots of ways. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I just, you know, I, that's like kind of heavy and gnarly. And then I just think it's gonna be a really long time before um, the live stuff comes back. But this is what I do think, and I'm rambling, so I'm gonna make it more succinct, is that number one, I think we're gonna become more localized. And I think it's not gonna be so much more global, which makes me concerned about festivals, burlesque hall of fame, things like that. I wonder what it's gonna be like, because I believe we're gonna continue to have pockets yep. regionally, locally, and like different countries and different places are gonna have different and so it's gonna make that type of mixing, so it's gonna be more localized and also maybe more digitized, but you know, this is for another conversation, but I, you know, there's certain ways to do burlesque digitally, I think, and that needs to be discussed and, you know, people are discussing it, whatever. Um, yeah, but I it'll just, be one of those things where we'll figure out slowly as well, because it's like, they were trying to figure out how to really keep burlesque afloat in general. Like every city yeah. had different- What do you think? Yeah. I love to live in the idea of, I have no fucking clue. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like when people are like thinking about what a new movie is going to be like about, like, especially like comic book movies. I yeah. just like documenting it. And then in the future, going back and seeing if we were right. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, for real. Like you, like Death Race 2000, that shit didn't come true. <laughs> like, you know, and I, I honestly. Does anybody know that movie? It's just me. <laughs> no, I don't know that movie, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. And that kind of always gives me peace in, in, and whenever there is like a struggle, just kind of being like, yeah. I fucking know. Like I've done a lot of things in my career based off of like everyone being like, bitch, that ain't gonna work. And I, and it yeah. still works based off of the idea of I have my own back. I'm not saying that that excludes other people in my life, but I'm just saying I have my own back and I'm healthy. Mm -hmm. I can do whatever I need to do in order to make my dreams come true. Now, mind you, that may not be on the timeline that I want it to be. Right, you have to relinquish some type of control, right? But I think, yeah, like grit and tenacity. And like, if I sounded dark or morbid with like saying things like mass extinction, it's like, no, it's not really like what I mean, but I just think that it's like, yeah. everything's changed forever, irrevocably changed, or irrevocably changed. And, and we, a, yeah, we have to adapt. That, but that change is inevitable. And especially as artists, we yeah. always have to deal with change. We can reach our highest peaks and still fall very quickly. Yes, so yes. And then go back up again. Like, And then I mean, go back up. That's why I love watching biopics of people who are like, ha like if you watch anybody that's had like a really long career, it is all like, you're like, they're oh my God, they're top of the world. And then it's like, man, they're eating cake in a bush high on meth, Johnny Cash. And then they come back and then they, or whatever. You know what, I mean, just like, yeah. rant, you know, the people that are really surviving, they they have grit and tenacity and they get back up. And I'm really resisting making a skating mode of metaphor right now, but I always want to like, make everything a roller skating metaphor. But yep. it's like that thing. And so I just get really, yeah. I, I think it's bad. exciting. I think it's scary. I think that it's like all up to us. I think it's up to us to check in on one another too and to be like, hey, how's it going? And I think it's up to us to let people live their fucking lives and their fucking showbiz lives. And if they want to do a digital show, fucking let them. And if they don't, then don't stress about it. Like we're all surviving in this weird ass place. Am I cussing too much? This is the real me. Girl, and it's just you like, are you, you kidding? Can't... Cuss away. <laughs> this is, we are not syndicated. Good, then I should have been like this the whole time. Like, yeah. okay. Humana, um, humana. <laughs> if I can pull uh, off this mustache, you can pull off cussing. Dude, I put on a bra for this and I, there's no point. It was so dumb. 
I love it, but I mean, at the end of the day, art is like, like they always say, it's a fucking marathon. It's not a sprint. And yes. if you want a career in this, then you have to realize that you could, and I can't wait until the documentary comes out, God, I hope, of Britney breaking out of her fucking crazy shit. And Dude, having I am again. like, oh God, I can't even like go too deep into it, but like, we can I have love a whole Britney. Episode. I always have, and like I lived in Southeast Louisiana in the early, early 2000s when she was like queen of the world. And so I did like, and I, I don't like her music, but I love Britney. You know what I mean? I I, let me just get that clear. I like, like anybody that follows album. me on Instagram knows that I have good taste in music. It's not that I love her songs, but I fucking love Britney. And I am following this. I'm following all this so much and I don't really, I've never been like a tabloid, like what's up with the celebrities and I watch The Bachelor. I'm not into any of this stuff, but man, I am Dang. just like, Brittany, I like, mm. I just want her Louisiana. to Louisiana. I want her to just be happy and say that she's happy. I want her to vocalize it. She, I want her to just go, I am happy, y'all. I am very happy and I can drive a car. If she could say that to, to on the internet, I will just be so fine. Um, <laughs> My yes. love, we are running out of time, but we still have some time. And I do not want you to go. So I do want to let you have that bad news of you leaving before I tell you the good news that I want to play a game with you. Oh my gosh, let's play a game. Wait, what kind of game? It's going to be a very fun game. It's sponsored by Jeez Louise, the number one burlesque performer in the entire world for all time. Uh, oh my gosh, it's, it's going to be fun. And it's called Name That Stripper. Awesome. So it's going to be- I might a, suck at this game. Like It's going to be fun. I didn't pick anyone that you aren't following on Instagram. <laughs> so I'm going to turn on the comments so you can have some help from anyone. Like, okay. not, the whole idea of this is not to act like you don't know who somebody is. It's literally just to promote our friends. Awesome. So, okay, uh, so these are like people that we know, like our friends. Okay, it's not like legends or like it in a can movie. Be, oh, no, 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 like, no, no. Okay, no, cool. All right, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm into it. It's strictly burlesque strippers. So okay. uh, I'm- I'm going to show you a pixelated photo, and then you can tell me oh in 10 God. seconds whether you... Oh, my God. You... What if I don't know what the answer is? And if you okay. don't know, and if you don't know, you can uh, you can poll the audience, all right? Remember, this is just fun, all right? Just have fun I know, with but it. I'm still going to look like a moron. Listen, no, you're not. Because first of all, at least you're on the Tito Bonito show. All right, here we go. Are you ready to name that stripper, Ginger? I'm so Ginger? ready. Let's do it. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Wait, I fucked up last time. Before, and now I'm fucking up let's do it like this i'm gonna actually before i show you a pixelated one oh no this works okay pixelated who is this stripper Ooh. oh my goodness i do not know but i wish i did because this is beautiful well you you who definitely do, you know this person she is pole artist and contortionist oh. candace kane she's like no i don't fucking know. yes oh my god <laughs> it's all right that's the hardest she's like one a chameleon. she looks so different all the time yeah, that's a and really that's challenging the, and that's the, one, I, just for what it's worth, because I feel like she looks a million different ways. Yeah. She uh, absolutely I'm, does. And literally, the only reason I did that to start off was to say she's going to be on the show next week. So check out Candace. Oh, um, oh, my God. She's, dude, I really want to get with her and her stretching. And, like, she does some cool stuff. She's amazing. All right, let's yeah. name this stripper. If you don't know this one, we're going to have to be mad about it. Who is this stripper? <laughs> Wait. Um, I'm drawing a blank. You're lying. Wait, is that? Oh, is that my good actor? <laughs> That's Alia. That's I was gonna just... be so mad. That is Alia. Yes, look at her looking all beautiful. <laughs> oh God. Serpentine. Oh, Talk about like my Alia, dude. Okay, yeah, now she... we're gonna go with someone who's a little bit more of an icon and a legend. Okay. Name that. Oh, shirt. it's Kitten. Yes. Kitten the Bell. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it looks like she got her nipples out, but she don't. And I wish she, she did. I hope the internet. No, she always, out. yeah, she always does. Yeah, no, that pasty look is so. I love that. That like where you're like, wait, are those? Yeah. You know it. It's that tease. All right, yeah. this one's gonna be super easy, but I've done the other one, so I have to include him. Okay. Uh, name that stripper. Oh, that's Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just like the silhouette. I'm like, that's Ray. <laughs> can I? Can I introduce him as that? Oh, that's just Ray. <laughs> oh my god dude usually oh my Ray god Gunn of yeah, the stage I... John, we love Ray Gunn I was gonna do Bazooka I Joe love... but I was like we've done Bazooka before so I had to yeah yeah to yeah and actually yeah remember when I ran into you guys that was fun times that's why I was gonna do it but yeah. I was like, we, we gotta show Ray some love because Ray is a, also a huge part of the stage door Johnny's this one's gonna be mad easy so I'm gonna test to see if uh oh, you know who's this stripper oh that's Violet Miss Violet Chashki 
drag yes. stripper extraordinaire. Good. That's an easy one because oh. the final one is going to be a little bonus tricky one. You're definitely okay. going to need help. We're going to raise that 10, 10 second clock up a little bit so you have some okay, time. Okay. Because I'm not going to show you a pixelated photo. I'm going to show you a baby photo. Oh, okay. And baby this is photo. obviously oh, this is impossible for you to get. I okay. requested this photo from the performer themselves. So oh, please okay. just for this occasion. Who is this stripper? Oh. Is that Zillia? No, you got no. two more shots. Ah! This one's going to be super hard, I, but I know you're going to be like gagged if you don't get I'm... it. Okay. I'm really Anybody bad at age audience? progression as well. Anybody in the audience? Oh, oh I, I showed Donna, God. so you can't cheat. Donna, you could cheat. Just oh, you could cheat. Oh, my God. Oh, wait. Who do you think? Is that is just? No, that's not Jezebel. <laughs> oh, okay, because she said so cute, so I didn't know she was like trying to. Know me. No, Jezebel wouldn't say that about herself, girl. Uh, look, <laughs> you actually have the right answer in the in the in the comments. Oh, I wasn't even reading the comments because I keep looking. I'm trying to figure it out. Oh. Oh, it's Raquel. Oh my gosh. Raquel. Oh my Rita! god. That was, wow. Yeah, that is challenging. Oh, I did that on purpose because that is so cute. Can you imagine? Oh, oh my God. Can you throw that other picture back up? I want to see it again. Oh, my God. Look at. Oh, my God. Look at that face. Look we're all doing the same thing right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Everybody's like, what? Yeah, y'all. That is wow. Raquel. Read. And that's everybody for uh, Name That Stripper. Thank you so much for playing that game with us, Ginger Valentine. Super fun. That was Oh, my tough. God. That's a little. <laughs> Sound effect, because you ki you killed that game like Yolanda Saldivar. <laughs> I hate that joke. It takes a year off my life every day, so I'm going to go kaput any second. Oh. Ginger, would you like to tell the audience anything else before you go? You have a website, gingervalentines.com. We also did not get yeah. to you teaching, but you also teach people to... I'm always talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. If Lips anybody follows me on Instagram, I got all my stuff. Links in the bio. I've got tons of stuff available online for burlesque instruction and floor play and fitness, and they can check it out. So if you want to learn the art of burlesque, Ginger Valentine is an amazing person to be teaching you about it. So yeah. please check her out, gingervalentine.com. You can find out all of the information there. And <laughs> if you're taking classes with Ginger through this show, I want you to tell me, all right? I want you to let me see <laughs> yeah. your progression. I want yeah, to know I'll it. give you a little cut back, yeah. <laughs> Ginger, no, no, I'm not like that. I just want to see that progression and know it came from our love. Ginger, I love you so much for joining us. This for was getting so the much fun. Thank you seriously for having me. I had the best time. It was really Anytime. great. Anytime. It was so cool to see Natasha. Oh my gosh. And if you ever want to come back and you want to promote anything, let me know. We'll make it happen because I love you so much and I love talking oh to you Oh my gosh, the feeling is so mutual. Life. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye, my love. <laughs> oh, everyone show some love to the wonderful Ginger Valentine. Thank you so much for gracing us on our stage as well, uh, on our stage, on our screens. Also, shout out to Natasha Estrada for also joining us. That was a good ass conversation, y'all. And I have one more minute left to plug up my shit. So I hope you all enjoyed yourselves in the comments. Everyone watching later on, is this on the telly? Is there nothing on on the telly? That's a Spice World reference. But um, remember, check me out every Friday right here at the Tito Bonito Show. Next week, we're going to have Johan Kalilian and Candice Kane. It's going to be a good-ass show. Also, you can catch me every Saturday night. Uh, two shows in San Diego with the Ooh La La Review. I'm hosting and performing. So if you want to socially distance, nice little moment. Uh, limited seating. You can check out ulalareview.com for more information. Also, shout out to Twin Peaks for saying I'm such a great host in the comments. I really appreciate that. Uh, I had great guests, so it was easy to do. We got 30 more. What is this dirt stash? Listen, Jezebel Thunder, this dirt stash. I was trying something new, all right? I'm not saying it's going to be there forever. I'm just saying that it's there right now. Um, uh, also, remember to be kind to each other, but most of all, your damn selves, y'all. And the biggest message of everything is tolerating racism is racism. So be kind to each other. I love y'all. Make good choices. I worry about you. Bye. Choo, 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 choo.